Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Roddy McDowell, George Brent, and Rita Johnson in My Friend Flicker. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Among the grown-ups of this world, there's usually something less than perfect understanding. But between boys and horses, there's a deep and abiding sympathy that leaves no room for bickering. Not a word is spoken, but there's a miracle of communication and a lump of sugar, a pat on the head or a nuzzled cheek. I had a horse when I was a boy, so when I heard what my friend Flicker was about, I knew I'd like it. But I was not prepared for the deep emotional experience which the 20th Century Fox picture gives to all who see it. Roddy McDowell's fine performance as the boy and Mary O'Hara's great story fit perfectly together. And tonight, we've brought back an old favorite of yours, George Brent as Roddy's father, with Rita Johnson from the picture cast as his mother. This drama has the power of simplicity. It's the story of a boy on a ranch and the outlaw horse, who is his friend. Together, they meet the joys and the pathos of their simple life, a life perhaps we all may envy. I believe it's plays like this which have given the Lux Radio Theater its reputation through the years and earned the loyalty which you have given to this theater and to Lux Toilet Soap. You know, it takes about 40 people to bring one of these plays to the microphone in addition to the actors. There are the engineers, writers, musicians, sound technicians, stagehands, script girls, play readers, research experts, and just plain handymen like me. All these people work all week so that you can have this hour of entertainment on Monday night. And you've certainly done your part magnificently. You've given us many excellent suggestions, and we've given you a double feature, a fine play and a fine product, Lux Toilet Soap. And here's the fine play right now, as the curtain goes up on the first act of My Friend Flicker, starring Roddy McDowell as Ken, George Brent as Rob, and Rita Johnson as Nell. Around the lower meadow they flash, the brood mares of the Goose Bar Ranch, and their new foals, around and around again. There's the great stallion, Banner, his proud mane flung out in the wind, and there's his lady, Rocket, her eyes rimmed with white as her graceful body sweeps through the high grass. And there are the foals, running close beside their mothers, running because they're so new to the world and so happy to be in it, and because the morning sky is clear. And the spring wind is fresh with the smell of pines from the mountains. Yes, this is the family of the stallion banner. This is the lifeblood of the ranch. Now toward the ranch house comes another horse. This one wears a saddle, but no rider. He runs free, his bridle whipping about his head. What now, Heldy? Look, Papa, here comes Cigarette. But there's nobody on him. Gee, this again? Oh, boy. Here, boy. Oh, there. Oh, oh. That's the boy. Easy, boy. Easy. Yes? Yeah, boss. What's the matter? Is that Cigarette? Yeah, boss. She come back alone. Ken riding her? He was, but he ain't now. Heldy, keep quiet. Yes, Papa. Oh, gone, that kid. Look at this bridle. Snapped in half. Hope Ken's all right. Oh, young one's full light, boss. He's used to it. Ah, well, there's always a chance of getting hurt. Saddle shorty. I'll better go see. Yeah, boss. Oh, wait a minute. Never mind, Gus. Here he comes now. He's limping. I bet he hurt his leg. Ken? Yes, sir? Come here. Yes, Dad? You all right? Sure, I'm all right. Just skin my knee a little. Did cigarette toss you again? Yes, sir. Then she dig your heels in her belly again. I didn't. Did you, son? Yes, sir. Well, good heavens, Ken. Aren't you ever going to grow up? How many times have I told you not to tap your heels into her? And look at that bridle. 
The second one you broke in this week. I'm sorry, Dad. Oh, Ken, did you find a saddle blanket? What saddle blanket? This one. I I lost it out in the rain yesterday afternoon. I was looking for it this morning. Rode with a saddle, I suppose, and forgot to cinch it properly. Yes, sir. Gee whiz, look. It's all cord. Will you keep quiet, Hildy? It, it got caught on some barbed wire, Dad, and... You're the doggone kid for losing and busting and forgetting. Dad! Never mind the excuses. There's your mother ringing for breakfast. Pull that horse out and come up to the house. Yes, Dad. Sit down, Rob. It's all ready. Any mail this morning? Right over there. Where's Ken? Oh, he's coming. Cigarette tossed him again. Oh. I don't know what I'm going to do with that boy. Doesn't seem to pay any attention to what I tell him. Always losing equipment or breaking it or spoiling it somehow. Oh, he's still a child. Well, he's right. old enough to have his wits about him. Never seen such a young one for walking around with his head in the clouds. Wonder he doesn't trip over his feet. Morning, Mom. Come on, darling. Eat your oatmeal while it's hot. Now, look at that. Rob, what is it? Ken's report card. Well, Ken, I suppose it won't surprise you to know that you haven't been promoted. No, sir. And here, maybe you'd like to see your mark. Oh, let him eat his breakfast first. Just as a matter of curiosity, Ken, how do you go about getting a zero in English? Forty in history, seventeen in arithmetic, but a zero... Just as one man to another, what goes on in your head? Well, haven't you got anything to say for yourself? Nothing, sir. Well, what were you doing in that English exam? What were the questions you missed? We were supposed to write a composition. Well, couldn't you think of anything? Yes, I had it all planned. I was going to write the story of how you lost your polo mare, how that wild albino came down from the meadow one year and stole her from Banner, and then how she came back, and her foal that year was white, the albino blood, and how it was passed on every year. Then how Rocket was born, and she was so beautiful and everything, but she could never be broken, because that wild blood was in her. I was going to write all that. Well, why didn't you? I... I got to thinking. I thought we had time. I thought the hour had just begun when the school bell rang. So you never even got started? No, sir. Not a single word, Ken? No, ma'am. Just daydreaming, huh? No, Dad, I was thinking about... About what? About... My coat. Your coat? You haven't even got a coat. Oh, Dad, give me a coat, will you, please? You'll get a coat when you learn how to treat one. You're going to buck up, young man. Trouble is, you don't try. I do try, Dad. Well, I don't see any proof of it. In the meantime, you'll spend an hour a day studying all the rest of the summer to make up your work. Come in. Good morning, Miss. Oh, good morning, Dad. Well, boss, what's for today? Good day to move the horses, Gus. Yeah, yeah, it's time they were off the mirrors. There's a storm cooking up in the southwest. Can I help, Dad? I've got to get four of the older horses in shape for the Rodeo. That means foolproof. Those three-year-olds have to be broken. Can't let them go any longer. Can't I help move them this year, Dad? Great guns, no. Tough enough to move a hundred horses fresh as blazes after a winter out without a kid tagging along to make them nervous. Right out, Gus. Hey, yeah, boys. Don't you want another cup of coffee, dear? No, I've had enough. Got to get started. Pancakes, Ken? No, thank you. Oh, Kenny. You can ride any horse we've got on the ranch. Why are you so set on having a cold? Oh, Mother, it isn't just riding. I want a colt to be friends with me. If I had one, I'd make it the most wonderful horse in the world. I'd feed it so it'd be bigger than any other horse on the ranch and the fastest. I'd school it so it would follow me around wherever I went, like a dog. You see, Mother, I want a colt of my own. All my own. Well, you'd better go up and start your studying, Ken. Get it over with, hmm? <laughs> What do you want, Hildy? Where are we going, Kenny? Uh, you're not going. I'm going to watch Dad bring in the horses. All right. We can take the shortcut and meet them halfway coming back. Oh, no, no. You'd better stay here. It's going to be tough enough to bring in a hundred horses. All of them as fresh as blazes after a winter out without having a girl tagging along to make them nervous. I'm coming. Those horses ain't scared of me. Oh, go on, Hildy. You better go back. I can come if I want. My father's the foreman. Well, my father's the owner of that ranch and that cell. Well, my father's the foreman and I can come if I want. Oh, all right. Get back there. Yo, rocket. Keep rocket in the middle of the bunch, Tim. Don't let her cut out. Yeah, yeah, rocket. Here they are, Hildy. Down there. See them? Better get back from the edge of that rock. And slip off and slide down in the meadow. I won't slip. Look, Hildy. See that big black stallion? That's Banner. And that one's rocket. Right in the middle. 
Gee, she's beautiful. Isn't she beautiful? Better get back, that's all. Look, do you see how Banner handles them? They have to do what he wants, all right, or he nips them. See, Hildy? Did you see? One of the mares wanted to cut out and run, but he made her get back and... Oh, look out! Yeah! No! No! Get out there! No! Hey, Gus, it's Stampede! No! Yeah, it. Oh! They're making for the run, pal. Get him off, Banner! Get him off, boys! <laughs> Okay, Tim? Okay, boss. Banner's a care Walk him slowly on the way back. Okay, boss. Ken, come here. What were you doing down here anyway? I... I came to see the horses. So you have to fall down the hill and start him into a stampede. I... I didn't mean to do it, Dad. I didn't mean to scare him. You didn't mean. You never mean anything, do you? Get up. I told you not to stand on that rock, didn't I? Now you're past mad at you. You'll catch him when you get home a bit. Oh, go away, Hildy. Ain't you coming? I'll, I'll be up later. What's that? Look, Hildy. That's a yearling. But she shouldn't be here. She must have come down from the home pasture. Jesus, look at her. Isn't she beautiful? Almost a white mane. That's the albino blood. But she's like Banner, too. She's got Banner's head. In. Oh, can she run like Banner, like the wind? Oh, Jesus. If I could ever have a coat like that. No more accounts for tonight. I'm out on my feet. How's the man feeling, Rob? Oh, so-so, I guess. Are we on the downgrade? Well, I never had so many bills and less money to pay them with. I don't seem to be able to sell the horses at a profit. But they're good horses with good blood. Mm Mm-hmm. All but that albino strain. And they've got a crazy streak in them. No use trying to sell them. I wouldn't even get back the cost of raising them at the price anybody would offer. I'd rather shoot them. I would, too, if they weren't the doggone fast. You know, I always hope to just get one decent coat out of that bunch. Now, well, let's go to bed. Rob. Hmm? Give Ken a cold. After the stunt he pulled this morning? Well, you know he didn't mean to. Well, he doesn't deserve a cold. Aren't you ever going to give him one? Sure, I've been expecting to. Maybe if he pays attention to his studies this summer. By the way, did he study today? Well, he exposed himself to his book. Yeah, I know. Nothing I say makes any impression. Well, don't you see? He set his heart on having a cold of his own, and he can't think of another thing. But that's all backwards. You don't bribe children to do their duty. It's not a bribe, Rob. No? What would you call it? Well, I just have a feeling that Ken isn't going to pull anything off. And it's time he did. Maybe a little thing like this would turn the trick. But that isn't a little thing. It isn't easy to break in school a cold. I'm not going to have one of my good horses spoiled by that boy's carelessness. Rob, it's important. He's got to succeed at something. What he needs... What he is... needs is to snap out of it. Well, if you want to put it that way. What I was going to say is, he needs to grow up a little bit. And how will having his own colt make him grow up? Oh, you know. Something of his own. Responsibility. He'd have something real and flesh and blood that he cared about more than all those things he goes mooning about. Well? Wait. Don't go. Nell, I... I'd like to give Ken a colt. I'd, I'd like to get closer to the boy somehow. But every time I get all set for a get-together session with him, he... Well, he hands me a facer like that thing he pulled today. Rob, didn't you ever want anything more than anything else in the world? Yes. Just one thing. And I have it. You, Nell. Oh. You do understand. You do. Don't you? Morning. Morning, Kenny. Sit down. Oh, Gus was in, Rob. Hmm? He tells me Rocket break, broke away from the home pasture last night. She did? He thinks she's got a cold somewhere. Well, there wasn't one with her yesterday. Now I'll have to chase all over the range looking for her. I'll find you, Dad. All right. I'll go with you. By the way, son, uh, I'm going to take back an order I gave you yesterday. You can forget that hour of study. Huh? Oh, thanks, Dad. You can. I'm going to give you a cold. A cold? A coat of my own? Mm-hmm. I'll give it to you, oh, a week from today. That'll give you time to look them all over and make your own choice. You mean 
I can have any cold on the ranch? Yes. A year? That's right. Be ready to leave in ten minutes. A cold of my own. Jeepers. Maybe I can have the one I saw yesterday. Any sign of a guess? No, boss. You want me to ride over the hill and look for a day? No, stay with me. Ken, uh, you may think it's funny my giving you a cold, and what you deserve is a good hiding. Flunking all your exams and then pulling that stunt yesterday. Well, I don't want you to think I'm letting you off. I haven't gone soft. Don't get that into your head. I expect just as much of you now as I ever did. This isn't any reward because you haven't won any reward. It's, uh, well, it's a partnership. One of these days, I'm going to need your help. You have to be trained so you'll know how to give it. Every man needs training, Ken. Discipline. I got mine at West Point. Now, you're going to train a colt. I'll give you a little help just at the first breaking. But you'll have to train it, and it'll train you. Yes, sir. You know, Ken, you and your mother may have to take care of this ranch without me pretty soon. Why, Dad? Where will you be? Well, I may go back into the Army any day now, son. You understand, don't you? Yes, sir. So I'm counting on you to make a good pony out of that colt and let it make a man out of you. Yes. Rocket's not here, boss. No colt here either. Well, I'm not surprised. I rode all over this grove yesterday, and I'm sure I didn't leave any colts behind. Besides, if Rocket had a colt, she wouldn't have left it. Dad, I saw a colt in the meadow yesterday. It got separated from that bunch in the stampede. It was a beautiful, sorrow filly with a cream mane and tail. Cream mane? Sounds like that yearling of Rocket's. Rocket's? Yeah. The filly sired by Banner last spring. That's what was the matter with Rocket last night. She missed a little filly and went back after her. Yes, if she did lose a colt, she'd very likely console herself with the yearling. She's loco, that Rocket. Well, we should pick up a track around here. Great boss. Well? There, there's a track, all right. But well, it ain't a horse, see? Right there. That's a cat, boss. Yep, it's a mountain lion, all right. Yeah, big one. Gee. We haven't had one of them around here for a long time. <laughs> it's a good thing we got the brood mares out of here yesterday. Yeah, that's what happened. The cat got Rocket's hole. When, Gus? Uh, track's not very fresh. Maybe two days old. Two days? Then it couldn't be. It couldn't be the one I saw yesterday, could it? No, of course not. You saw a yearling yesterday. Gus, we better keep an eye out for that cat. Yeah, boss. I go up around Castle Rock with a gun one day. There she is, Dad. There's Rocket. Yeah, that's the yearling with her, too. There they go. Look at that silly one, Dad. She's almost as fast as Rocket. She sure is. <laughs> what a pretty little flicker she is. Flicker? What does that mean, Gus? Swedish for little girl. Flicker. That's what I'll call her. My coat. Your coat? Yes, sir. That's the one I want. Rocket's filly? Yes, sir. Well, I certainly hope you'd make a wiser decision than that. You know how I feel about Rocket. That whole line of horses. But she's fast, Dad, and... They're the worst horses I've got. There's not one among them with any real sense. The mares are hellions and the stallions are outlaws. They're untamable. I'll tame her. Nobody's ever been able to tame them. You want a horse that'll be a friend of you, don't you? Yes, sir. Well, you'll never make a friend out of that filly. No fence in the world will ever hold her. You no. Better change your mind. No, I want her, Dad. Well, okay, Ken. I promise you could make your own choice. But remember, Rocket's loco, and ten to one, the colt is too. But, Dad, she may not be. Banner's her father. All right, all right, it's up to you. We'll bring her in the next day. That's what I stopped by for, Rob. Thought you might have something fast I could use. Well, I told you last fall about Rocket. Not interested. Charlie, with all your racehorses, you haven't got anything like Rocket. That she-devil can outrun any animal you've ever seen. Oh, you're crazy. Wouldn't like to make a little bet on that, would you? Hello, Charlie. Well, hello there, Nell. No, no, don't get out. Well, what are you two talking about? Rocket. You know, if I could get a mare that could really run without training... That's Rocket. She'd make a fortune for you, if you could break her. <laughs> I got a bronco buster who can break any horse that was ever foaled. And he can do it if she's worth breaking. Is she worth it, didn't I just tell you? How much do you want for her? Five hundred. You got a stopwatch? No, but I've got a speedometer. She's down in the lower pasture. We could get her out on the road there and chase along after her in the car. We could clock her that way. All right, come on. Well, what do you think?
you say, Charlie? Great gun. She's like a locomotive. Does she always run like that with her nose in the air? Yeah, she's a stargazer. Look at that speedometer. 30 miles. Past her boss, she ain't half trying. Go to it, Rocket. 32, 33. If she does 35, I'll buy her. 34. 35. Jumping cheaper. Well, what do you say? It's a deal. If you deliver her to my ranch, sound in wind and limb. But just how you're going to do that, my lad, is anybody's guess. You leave that to me. I'll have her in my truck this afternoon. <laughs> Boss, get in there. Get in Be you. Be careful, Rock. Open the trailer door, Tim. She's coming through. All set. Get up, Rock. Get up. Watch it, boss. There she is. Close the gate. Wow. That rocket. All right, Tim. Get on that truck. And don't swing that trailer on the curves. Remember, Charlie expects her delivered in good shape. And don't skin her up. Okay, boss. All right. Get her out of here. Well, that's that now. You mean that's $500? It'll come in mighty handy, won't it? I guess we can use it. $500 and rocket off the ranch. Oh! oh what the... Bob, Bob, she's hurt. Hold it. Don't move that truck. Oh, Bob, Mom, what happened? What's Don't that? look, Kenny. It's Rocket. She was in the trailer and then she reared up. It... Go, go in the house, dear. Rocket? Go inside, dear. Take the trailer off there. I'll be right back to help you with it. Yeah, boss. Well, Rob? Ah, uh, She's finished. When she reared up, she hit her head on the gate down there. She's dead. Oh, poor Rock. Well, there's one thing I can still do. I can get rid of every albino horse on the ranch, and I'm going to. You're going to sell them? To Williams. Williams? They're too good for Williams. Well, he buys horses, doesn't he? But he buys any kind of horses, and he doesn't pay anything. Well, whatever I... he pays is good enough. Hello. Hello, Williams. This is Rob McLaughlin. Look, Williams, I've got a load of horses for you. Yeah, those albinos. Rocket's whole tribe. All right, all right, at your own price. Good. Yeah, there are nine of them. Uh, wait a minute. There may be Ted. Ken? Come here. Yes, Dad? I'm going to give you a chance to do a sensible thing. I want you to choose another colt and let me sell Flicker to Mr. Williams with the rest of those jugheads. For your sake, I'm asking you to do this as well as mine. Sell Flicker? What's the use of having another rocket on your hands? Did you just see what happened to her? But I'm going to tame Flicker. But you can't. It's impossible. Sometimes bad horses get tamed. You don't want a local horse, do you? I want Flicker. Look at me. Dad, please. She's mine. You gave her to me. And she... I want her, Dad. I want Flicker. All right. Sorry to keep you waiting, Williams. I thought there was one more, but there are only nine. In a few minutes, Mr. DeMille and our stars, George Brent, Roddy McDowell, and Rita Johnson, will return in Act Two of My Friend Flicker. And now, let's try to catch up with a busy lady who has quite an unusual job. There it goes. The whistle that means the end of the daytime shift at Central Aircraft. Miss Emery. Oh, Miss Emery, uh, won't you let us have a few minutes? Mm, two at the most. I've got a line of girls waiting for me. Miss Emery, did you ever think when you got your nurse's cap that someday you'd also be beauty advisor at a great airplane factory? (laughs) Hardly, Mr. Kennedy. Because no one ever thought a few years ago that beauty counsel and factory work would go together. But practical, hard-headed management has found that it pays. Well, uh, tell us why, won't you? Well, to put it briefly, executives have been discovering that when spirits are high, work is good. Of course, every woman knows that when she looks her best, she's likely to be feeling her best, and so doing her best. That's why we urge the girls to take good care of their hands, their hair, and their skin. Even suggest bright nail polish. Helps morale, you know. Yes, I can see that it would. Uh, What do you tell the girls about complexion care, Miss Emery? Well, we tell them there's no one thing that contributes more to a girl's good looks than a smooth, lovely skin. Do you make a practical suggestion? Yes, we stress regular care. No skipping beauty care at bedtime just because you're tired. A complexion care must be gentle, too. One you can depend on. Well, that sounds as though you were going to mention Lux Toilet Soap any minute now. Well, it just happens that my own beauty care is Lux Toilet Soap, Mr. Kennedy. I've used it for years. Well, I'm sure of one thing, Miss Emery. That gorgeous Lux complexion of yours must have quite an influence with the girls in backing up what you tell them. Well, thank you, Mr. Kennedy. 
As a matter of fact, Lot's toilet soap is a great favorite at the plant. So many of the girls find that regular, active lather facials give them real beauty help. Thank you very much, Miss Emery. It's true that not only nine out of ten screen stars, but women everywhere, find that this famous white soap does give skin the gentle protecting care it ought to have. Now, here's a shopping suggestion. Lux Toilet Soap, Hollywood's beauty soap, tomorrow. We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Act two of My Friend Flicker. Starring George Brent as Rob, Roddy McDowell as Ken, and Rita Johnson as Nell. has lost the freedom of the pasture. She's learning now that to be a friend of man, she must submit to the flash of a rope around her neck and the high bars of the corral. But Flicker's blood is that of the wild albino, a breeding of the open prairie land. Head her into the stable, Sam. Just stand by the door. She gets in bolted after her. Yeah, boss. Yo! Yo, get in there. There she goes. She's going in the stable, Dad. Watch it, guys. Now, now, get that door closed. She's in, boss. Yeah. Well, that's that. Sure is a vile one, boss. Come look on that filly. I'll leave her in there to think it over. Hey, she's pretty mad. She's around the side there. She's coming through the side window, boss. Get around there, quick. There she goes, right through the glass. Flicker, Flicker, come back. Watch her on the barbed wire. Head her away if you can. Yeah, get back. She's going right for the fence, boss. Well, if she's anything like her mother, she'll go right through that wire. Yeah, look out, you. Flicker! Now, what did I tell you? She ran right into it. Come on, Gus. Whoa, girl. Whoa, easy there. Easy. Whoa. Whoa. You got your pliers, Tim? Yeah. Hold her leg there. Oh, girl. Oh, girl. Dad, Whoa, there. she's all cut. She's bleeding. Snip that wire, Tim. Sure got herself wrapped up in this. Oh, hurry, Tim. Please, hurry. He's, he's doing the best he can. She's cut pretty bad, boss. I don't think she'll pull out of it. Well, uh, maybe it's just as well. If it hadn't been this way, it would have been another. A loco horse isn't worth a bullet it takes to shoot it. Oh, Flicker. Flicker. Kenny, eat your dinner. I'm not hungry, Mom. Please, Kenny. Do I have to? You heard what your mother said. But, but Flicker, she... I thought maybe I could go down and see how she is. Your mother said to eat. Let him go to her, Rob. He can't do her any good. Just and Tim pulled her inside the fence and put menthol blue on her cut. She snaps out of it. She's got water and oats. Rob, let him go. All right, yeah. all right. Go ahead, go ahead, go on. Thank you. Oh, Does it hurt a lot, Flicker? I didn't mean to hurt you. I just wanted you to be mine. And and that means you'd have to get to know me. That's why we brought you here, Flicker. So we could be friends. I'll stay here with you as much as I can. I'll come here every morning and every night. And every day after I finish my work and you'll get well again. Oh, get well, Flicker. Please be all right. Please, Flicker. Rob, I wish you'd be a little nicer to Ken. Why? He's gone against everything I've told him to do. Taking that wild albino. Insisting on keeping it. Crazy nag. Well, it's been hard on him, too. He's all broken up worrying about it. Well, him. so am I. I'm burned up. And what's it all for? He's going to have a horse to train. Why didn't he pick a decent one? One that would have taught him something. Made a man of him. What can he do with this poor little filly? Give him a little time, Rob. You just see all this is changing, Ken. He's learning. Learning what? 
To sit under a tree all day and moon over? No. He's learning to face facts. I haven't noticed him facing any facts. You will. If you just watch for it. so chipper about this morning. Flicker. She's better. Oh, coming along. Huh? Mm-hmm. She's almost well. The pets are all healed up and she's eating like a horse. Mm-hmm. That what? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe we're going to have a pleasant summer after all. If she doesn't turn out to be another rocket. Oh, I hope not. We'll find that out when we'll put a holder on her. Well, what kind of matters is that? Well, I'm sorry. Good morning, Mom. Morning, Dad. Good morning, Ken. Coffee, Rock. Thanks. Ken, now that Flick is better... I want you to remember that you have some other duties. Oh, yes, sir. You can give some of your time to your cold, but not all of your time. Oh, I won't, Dad. Oh, Dad. Hmm? Could you come down and look at Flicker this morning and see how she is? Well, will Her Highness let you get near her? Well, not too close. She's still a little scared. But she'll let you look at her from the other side of the fence. That's big of her. Okay. We'll go down after breakfast and give her the once over. Oh, swear. Dad. Good morning, Flicker. Now, listen, Flicker. Dad's coming down to look at you, so be a good girl and don't run away, will you? Well, she does look good. Fine, Ken. Yes, sir. Her cuts are all healed up, except for the one on the right front leg, and it's almost well. I think she's beautiful. Dad, do, do you think she's local? I'd have sworn it by the way she's behaved ever since she was born. But we've never seen her except when she was scared out of her wits. Oh, every horse looks wild in the eye when it's terrified. She tried to go through that fence and she knew she shouldn't. Yes, well, we'll forgive her that one. Point is, will she learn? Can she learn? And we... We've got to find that out, don't we? I mean, if she is loco, maybe I'll never get her trained. Of course not. And there's no maybe about it. Son, what have I been telling you all these weeks? Didn't you understand? What did you think loco meant? sort of goofy or wild or hard to handle. Oh, no. It's much more serious than that. There can be insanity among animals, and bad blood can carry it on. And that albino blood isn't safe for any filly to have. But you said maybe it's just because she's been scared. Well, that's right. We won't really know until we see how she responds to training. Dad, how can I train her? All you can do is try to win her confidence. You know, son, if you take everything away from a living creature, freedom, friends... It's home, habits, and happiness. It'll turn in sheer need and desperation to the one thing that's left. In this case, that's you. Me? Yes. You're her whole life now. Make her like it. Oh, I will, Dad. I will. Give her love and companionship. And talk to her. Will she understand me? Of course. And a horse can tell you a lot of things, too. If you watch and expect her to be sensible and smart. Pay attention to all the little signs. The way it moves its body, the ears, the eyes, and the whinnies. That's its way of talking, Ken. That's right. There's the neigh of terror, the scream of rage, the whinny of nervous impatience, and the nicker of longing or hunger yeah. or friendliness. You learn its language, and it'll learn yours. And never forget, horses understand everything you say to them. Everything, Dad? Everything. You mean... You mean if they're not local? Yes, Ken. for your oats, but I'm hurrying as fast as I can. There. There you are. Come and get it. Good, isn't it, Flicker? Oh, Flicker, you do understand me, don't you? Now, eat it all so you'll be big and strong like Banner. You know, you've got a very smart father, Flicker, and you've got to forget all your wild ways and be just like him. Who are you talking to? Flicker. Oh, of course you can. Can people talk? Well, that's all you know. Flicker understands everything I say, and what's more, she talks back to me. Ah, uh, poo. Well, maybe you don't know, but horses got a language all their own. There's the neigh of terror, the scream of rage, the whinny of nervous impatience, the nicker of longing. See, there's a nicker of hunger. Hmm. Can. What? Can. Can you wiggle your ears? Oh, go away, Hildy. <laughs> What's in your mind, Ken? You want to speak to me about something? 
Yes, Mom. Well? Mom, did you ever want anything terribly? Most everyone wants something, dear. But you're grown up. You're married. You've got Dad and me. Well, you're finished. <laughs> <laughs> then I shouldn't still be wanting, should I? But people do care. Everyone? Always, Mom? Don't you ever get really finished? I wonder. Maybe sometime, for a minute or two. What is it you want now, Ken? Oh, Mom, I want Slater to be all right. Not local. Oh, perhaps she isn't local, dear. We don't know yet for sure, but if she is, Ken, wanting won't change it. If she is, it'll look bad for her, won't it? Well, let's see what happens when we try to haul the breaker. Does she have to be hauled or broke, Mom? We've got to find out, don't we? I suppose so. But, but what if she won't let us? She loves you, doesn't she? Oh, yes, I'm sure she does. Well, that shows she's intelligent. How does it, Mom? Well, it's just a way of putting away fear. Don't you understand, Ken? But if you find love, if a person or an animal finds love, it's the same as finding safety. It's comfort and friendliness and help. Everyone longs for it. And if Flick has found it, yet doesn't have sense enough to know she's found it and goes on being crazy and silly with fear, then... Then... Then she'd be local. Yes. Start getting the hay in tomorrow, Gus. Sure, boss. Nell, I'm hiring some hands for the next week or so. They'll eat a lot. I'll be ready. Good. Hello, son. Dad, I've been thinking. Don't you think it's about time that... that we hold a boat flicker? What's that? I... I think we ought to find out now. You know what it means, Ken? Yes, I know. It... it'll prove whether or not she... whether I can have a trainer. I'll leave it to you, son. When do you want to try? Well, I thought... I thought today... All right. Call her over here, Ken. Yes, sir. Flicker! Come here, Flicker! Have your rope ready, Tim, just in case. All set. Flicker! She's turning. Here she comes, Dad. See? Yep. All right. Now put your bandana around her neck and tie it in a loose knot. Go ahead. Like, like this? That's it. Easy, Flicker. Easy. Now take your belt off and slip it through the bandana. That's it. Now take a hold of the belt and lead her around. Go on. Yes, Leave Dad. Her. Come on, Flicker. Come on, girl. That's right, Flicker. Don't be nervous. You'll be all right. Don't be nervous. All right. Now bring her back. Yes, sir. This way, Flicker. That's the girl. Yes, Dad? Well, son, I'd call that halter broken. But it isn't a halter, Dad. Followed your son. She walked along with you without fear. That's not. But, but how did she get hold of broke, Dad? That's the way we break horses on the Goose Bar Ranch. You figure it out for yourself. Come on, Gus, let's get out those machines. Oh, Mom, did you see? She's not loco. She's not loco. <laughs> Kenny, I uh, think maybe you better come to the pasture right away. What's the matter? Is it Flicker? Yeah. It's a leg from the barbed wire. I think maybe she got infection. Infection? Is it bad? She's lying down. I think maybe it is very bad. Hurry it up, Tim. We've got to get that hay in before tonight. Okay, boss. Rain in the air, boss. Yeah, going to storm. Dad. What, son? Dad, I'd like to talk to you. What about? Rip it, Tim. It's about Flicker. Flicker, for the love of my Ken. Can't you see I'm busy? This is no time to be worrying about that filly. I'm sorry, Dad. I didn't know you... Oh, uh, just a moment. What is it, son? Is Flicker worse? Oh, Dad, she's so sick. Will you come down and see her? Maybe you can do something to help her. All right. I'll come and have a look at her. Keep it going here, Tim. Come on, Gus. There she is, Dad. She's lying down oh, again. For the love of... What's happened to her? She's been getting awfully thin. Thin? Oh, I can count every rib. I'm afraid she ain't going to pull out of it, boss. Pull out of it? She's dead already. How long has she been like this? 
She's been going down fast the last few days. It's the fever. It's burning her up. She's going to die, Dad. She'll die unless we do something. I'm afraid it's too late, Ken. We, we'll have to put her out of her misery. Dad, you mean... Oh, no, Dad, we can't. We can't do that. I'm sorry, Ken. But it isn't fair to an animal to let it suffer like this. Look at her. She's burning up. Why? She can hardly breathe. Gus, you know what to do. There's a gun in the shed. And pick a time when Ken is not around. Oh, After a brief intermission, Mr. DeMille presents Roddy McDowell, George Brent, and Rita Johnson in Act Three of My Friend Flicker. Now, here's Sally, and uh, looking a little puzzled, too. Mr. Kennedy, I've got a letter here from my young cousin Joe in the Army, and, well, I can't understand a word of this sentence. Uh, read it, Sally. Maybe I can help you. He says, was in the limp line this week, Sally. I'm okay now, though. The doc slipped me some shutters and sent me packing for my snore sack. That's elementary, my dear Sally. It means Joe was at sick call, the doctor gave him some sleeping pills, and sent him to bed. Any more? Yes, he goes on to say, the eagle flew yesterday, which gives me enough pocket lettuce to go to town Sunday. I'll have to get flicked up with a chili bowl first, and... <laughs> Goodness, Mr. Kennedy, you'd better translate that. He means yesterday was payday. And so he has enough paper money to go to town. But first he has to get a haircut. Well, now at last I'm coming to something I can understand. He says, and say, when it comes to flicking up, that package of Lux soap you sent me is okay. Boy, the lather's wonderful, the kind a man likes. He might even have said, Lux soap slicks a man up by the numbers. That's army talk too, Sally, and it means with precision and efficiency. Sally, it looks as though that present of yours made a hit in any language. Well, Mr. Kennedy, I've always noticed that the men in our family enjoy using Lux soap just as much as I do. Sure, Sally, why not? Men like a little luxury, too. A bath with that rich, creamy Lux soap lather makes a man feel like a million. Did you know, Mr. Kennedy, Lux toilet soap is a bestseller in all branches of the service? Yes, Sally, and there are lots of good reasons for it. For one thing, Lux toilet soap costs so little, and being hard-milled, it lasts such a long time. You can use it right down to the last thin sliver. But most important of all, men go for that rich, active lather that gets off the day's dust and grime with neatness and dispatch. Does it gently, too. Yep, Sally, as a soap for face and hands, and as a bath soap, too, Lux has everything. Yes, and it's nice to know it's one of those little everyday luxuries we can all afford. Right, Sally. So here's our tip to women everywhere. Let all the family enjoy using this fine white soap. And remember, Lux Toilet Soap is hard milled. It lasts. And it's easy on your budget. Now, our producer, Mr. DeMille. After the play, we'll have a chat with our stars and a surprise guest star. Now the third act of My Friend Flicker, starring Roddy McDowell, George Brent, and Rita Johnson. In the morning, before Ken is awake, a rifle shot will bring an end to Flicker's suffering. Now in the quiet of the night, the boy steals silently from the house down to the pasture to whisper a last goodbye to his friend. But Flicker is not there. Flicker! Flicker, where are you? Flicker! Then at last he finds her. Flicker has stumbled to the stream, and she lies there on her side, her head in the water. There's a spark of life still burning in her. All night, the boy crouches beside her in the icy current, his young arms cradling her head, holding it clear of the stream, whispering words of comfort, fighting off death. In the morning, 
The boy is close to death himself. Well, Doctor? Uh, give him one of these pills every hour. I'll call to see him again tonight. He's a pretty sick boy, isn't he? He's very sick, Rob. What happened to him? He went down to see his coat last night when she was lying in the stream. I found him there this morning. You don't know how long. Perhaps all night. I see. Well, you'd better have this prescription filled right away. I'll take you into town and bring it right back. Come on. No. Don't worry, darling. You'll be all right. Hurry, Rob. Please, hurry. Is Flicker dead? No, missus. Him and me, we fixed her up in a blanket sling. She can't stand alone. But she drank a bucket of water like a good one. Did... Did Rob say you didn't have to shoot it? No, missus. But I just couldn't do it. When I found him like that this morning, I feel him a little boy I, I know, knew. Garrett. I know what you mean. She's got plenty of strength yet. She could live, maybe. She could? Sometimes I think just miracles can still happen. It was the cold water washing the fever out of her. But it was more than that. It was Ken giving her courage. All night, that little fella sitting by her and saying, Hold on, Flicker. I'm here, Richard. The two of us together. Uh, storm coming up, missus. Big one. I'll stay here, I guess. Maybe you need me. Thank you, Carl. Yeah, yeah. I made it as fast as I could. Road washed out. I had to go the long way. How is he? He seems a little better. He's been resting. Oh, good. Here's the medicine. I'll give it to him right away. Well, Gus, did you do as I told you? Boss, I just couldn't. Well, I gave the order. You had plenty of time. I just couldn't do it. Where's the rifle? I left it in the bunker. I'll go and get it. I'll do it myself. Oh, Rob, please don't. Ken knows she's alive. He thinks she'll get well. Give him something to hope for. It would have been a lot better if that poor little filly was shot weeks ago. It meant nothing but trouble and misery for all of us. Look what it's done to Ken. I wish you wouldn't, Rob. He needn't know. He'll hear the shot. In the storm, he'll think it's thunder. No! No, he'll know it's the rifle. Sorry, Nell. It's just no use letting sick animals live. <laughs> been out in thunderstorms all of her life. That was Dad's car I heard before, wasn't it, Aunt? Yes, dear. He's home. And then, then he went out again. Didn't he, Mom? Yes. Down to, down to the pasture. Oh, Ken. I know she's sick. She's so sick. We can't allow Adam. We mustn't let them suffer. Maybe she'll get there. It could happen, Ken. Mom, remember what you said? It was something you wanted. Awfully bad. Yes, dear. What was it? I've wanted it ever since a few years after you were born. What was it, Mom? It was a little girl, Ken. Oh, we wanted... The same thing, didn't we? How do you mean, darling? Do you know what little girl would do to me, sweetie? Flicker. Little Flicker. Oh, Ken. Ken, dear. Oh, <coughs> my 
No, darling. It was a shot. No, heard. no, it was thunder. It was thunder. Yes. He's dead. Look at dead. Look at dead. Robbie, all right? Sure. Why? Ken's asleep and Gus is with him. I got worried about you. Is that flicker? Yep. But I... Why, I heard a shot. It was the mountain lion. I took a crack at him. Did you get him? No, but I will before morning. But what about flicker? You said you were going to... Yeah, I know, I know. But I couldn't do it. That darn little fool wants to die. She'll have to do it by herself. Oh. Ken heard the shot. Yeah? How'd he take it? Well, he took it. Didn't question it. Didn't seem to rebel. Well, if he wakes up and asks, I don't think you'd better tell him she's still alive. Oh, but Rob, that... She may be dead by morning. Wouldn't surprise me. He's accepted her death now. If he knows she's still alive, he'll be all upset again. I won't tell him. You better get along up to the house. If that cat's still around, I don't want you wandering around in the dark. Well, are you going to stay here? With that filly tied up like that, the cat will probably come back. Can't believe it. Rob. Rob. Well, go along, Mel. I don't want Rob, to... look. Over here. In the tree. Shh. All right. Don't move. I can see his eyes, Rob. Quiet. If we move, he'll spring. All right. I've got a sight on him now. <laughs> yeah, that's oh, finishing. Man. Easy, Flicker. Easy, girl. That cat won't bother you now. Well, young fella, how's it feel to be out again? Fine, Dad. He's still a little shaky in the legs, Rob. We have to stop and sit down a minute. Up you go, young fella. I'll carry you for a while. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Well, the doctor said to walk, didn't he? Well, we'll walk. <laughs> Where are we going? Oh, I thought we'd take a look down the home pasture. I've got the yearlings in there again. Oh, the yearlings? Sure. Still want a colt, don't you? Well, you can pick one out. Dad. Anyone on the ranch. Dad, I don't want to pick one out now. Why, Ken? Please, not now. Ah, uh, there they are. Some beauties in that pack, Ken. Oh, please, Dad. Look, Ken. Look at that pretty little filly. That one over there. Why, why, she... Mom, it's like Flicker. It is flicker. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. But, but I thought... I didn't shoot her. I couldn't. That shot was for the mountain lion. Oh. I killed it. Oh, flicker. Flicker, come here. It's me, flicker. It's your friend. Oh, easy, Ken. Flicker, here she comes. Oh, Dad, look. She knows me. Hello, flicker. <laughs> oh, flicker. She did get gentle, didn't she, Dad? Gentle as a kitten. She's given us a lot of trouble, son. She's taught us a few things, too. Important things. You, responsibility. And me, that there is such a thing as hope beyond hope. And sometimes, when things are at their lowest ebb, all we need do is have a little more love, a little more patience, and a little more faith. Dad, does she know what we're saying now? I think so. And now she's asking if she can run again. Go on, Flicker. Run, Flicker. Run! The curtain falls on my friend Flicker. And our very good friends, George Brent, Friday McDowell, and Rita Johnson... Answer your applause with a well-earned curtain call. Thank you, C.B. And I'd just like to say that Roddy is the biggest trooper for his size I've ever seen. What's your ambition, Roddy? Well, Miss Johnson, I hope someday to be the checker champion of Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty big ambition. Think you'll make it? Oh, I practice any time I can find a pigeon. Oh, I mean a partner. <laughs> I played with my dad before he went to sea with the merchant marine. Keep it up. Competition is good for the soul, Roddy. Yes, sir. Sometimes it's good for the lungs, too. 
Before Henry Fonda went in the Navy, he and I used to see who could hold his breath for the longest. You can find the score on the wall of his old dressing room. What the winner get, a chocolate soda? Or maybe a Sunday, Miss Johnson. I'd like to buy you one of my special Sundays sometime. <laughs> I'd love it, Roddy. What's in it? Well, you know those pumps they have in the soda fountain with the chocolate and raspberry and other stuff uh -huh. in it? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Well, you take out a dish of ice cream and you put a squirt out of each pump on it. Then you hold your breath for a good long time. <laughs> it sounds a little complicated, Roddy. Now, I like simple things. I think that's why I'm so fond of Lux Soap. You see, it's very easy complexion here. It doesn't take much time, and that's important when you're busy. Now, Lux Soap is made for girls who are both beautiful and busy, Rita. And believe me, things are going to be beautifully busy around this microphone next week. What's the place, E.B.? It's Philip Barry's sensational hit, The Philadelphia Story. A two-time hit, first on Broadway during a long run, and later as a Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer picture. And our stars will be... Well, I... I told you we'd have a surprise guest tonight. It's one of next week's stars, Robert Taylor. Hello, everyone. You've held back the most important part of the news, C.B. I, I guess Bob means the rest of our cast. We'll have three stars in the Philadelphia story next week. Robert Taylor, Loretta Young, and Robert Young. Yes. <laughs> Bob Young and I are both delighted at the opportunity of working with Loretta. I think we're going to have a swell time here next week. Now, it's lucky for us we caught you all during a week off from pictures. What's your latest over at Petro Golden Mayor, Bob? It's called Batan, C.B., and there are a lot of great fellows in it. George Murphy, Tommy Mitchell, Lloyd Nolan, Lee Bowman, Desi Arnaz, and a very promising newcomer named Bob Walker. The story's about an incident in the Philippine campaign that involved 13 men and not a single woman. No women? <laughs> That's a novelty for pictures. <laughs> the word Batan will always stand for something very noble in American history. So I'm, I'm anxious to see what the picture's like. Incidentally, Bob, how much longer will you be in Hollywood? Uh, just a short time, C.B. I have one picture to finish, which won't take long. And then, ladies and gentlemen, Bob enters the Navy Air Corps. <laughs> we wanted to have him here just once more before he left. That will be next Monday night when we present Robert Taylor, Loretta Young, and Robert Young in the Philadelphia story. Glad to be aboard, C.B. I'm expecting a great show, Bob. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. See you at the hotel, Bob. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Robert Taylor, Loretta Young, and Robert Young in the Philadelphia story. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. <laughs> Heard in tonight's play were Leo Cleary as Gus, Mary Lou Harrington as Hildy, Fred Mackay as Tim, Norman Field as Mr. Sargent, and Charles Seal as the doctor. Our music was directed by Louis Silver. And this is your announcer, John M. Kennedy, reminding you to tune in next Monday night to hear Robert Taylor, Loretta Young, and Robert Young in The Philadelphia Story. Food rationing and shortages don't worry me. I make sure my family gets enough vitamins and minerals. I just buy Vims and add them to my family's meals. You see, Vims are scientifically designed to help make meals complete. Right. For Vims give you all the essential vitamins and all minerals commonly lacking. They're pleasant to take, too. Children love them. Ask for Vims at your druggist. VI for vitamins, double MS for minerals. Vims. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.